Good afternoon, everyone. It is our science lesson now. And we have been learning all about different kinds of habitats. So I believe that in the last few weeks, you were learning about your local habitats. So habitats that you might find around where you live or around school in the woodlands. And you also were looking at micro habitats. I'm going to introduce you to my little, little friend here. This is Squishy, my Squishy unicorn. And she sometimes likes to come and join us for our work. So Squishy, I wonder if you can remember what a micro habitat is. Oh, okay. Can you remember what a micro habitat is? And we'll see if Squishy was right. Pause the video and just have a little think. What's a micro habitat? Hmm. Okay, a micro habitat, as Squishy told me, is a small habitat where mini beasts live. So you might find them under stones, under bits of wood, under leaves in the soil. So a micro habitat is just a really small habitat. But what is a habitat? First of all, can you think you two, what is a habitat? I wonder if Squishy can help as well. Squishy, do you remember? Oh, very good, okay. So, did you remember year two? What is a habitat? You are absolutely right. Habitat is where animals live. It's their home. I'm just going to show you a little video now all about habitats. Hopefully I'll be able to share my screen with you. And we can watch the video together. Here we go. Hopefully you can see this. Our planet, a world of shifting landscapes, each with different challenges for the creatures who make it their home. Diving deep under the water's surface, we can see how one animal has evolved for the underwater world it inhabits. The octopus. With its eight arms, it propels itself along the seabed, sometimes swimming, climbing over rocks, feeling its way. The suckers covering its body are taste receptors. Imagine your body covered in hundreds of tongues you taste as you moved along the ocean floor. The octopus is a master of disguise. Being spineless without a single bone in its body means it can do this. Squeeze into a tight spot and disappear when necessary. Like the octopus in the ocean, Animals and plants all over the world have special ways of surviving in the place where they live. Their habitat. Whether it's woodland, water, deserts, or mountains. A habitat holds everything a creature needs to live and grow. Food, shelter, air and water. Plants provide shelter and food for herbivores, who in turn are prey for predators. In one way or another, they all depend on each other, and they all have evolved and adapted to the place that they call home. Like these three bears, they're distantly related, but they live in very different places. 
from the far frozen north to lush woodlands and the sweltering heat of a bamboo forest. In the past, these bears have shared a common ancestor, but now they have all changed and adapted to their local habitat. How are they different? What has changed? What kind of environment have they adapted to? Polar bears have thick white coats, keeping them warm and making them less visible in the icy Arctic. There are very few hiding places here. These bears have the most sensitive noses of any mammal. They can smell a seal several kilometers away. They can swim for days on end in freezing water. Their fur repels water and their forepaws are round and webbed. Great for swimming and walking on soft snow. Giant pandas spend their days searching for and eating bamboo. Only bamboo. They must eat all day and sometimes part of the night. Pandas have larger heads than other bears with strong jaw muscles for chewing tough bamboo. They also have another unique feature. Because they spend all day stripping the leaves from branches, they have an extra thumb. Brown bears live in woodlands, where their food supply changes with the season. In the summer, there is plenty to eat. A good time to bring up cubs. There's fish to catch, and berries to munch on. In the autumn, Brown bears eat as much as they can, getting ready for winter, when food is hard to find and it's time to enter the den. Brown bears snooze their way through much of winter, using very little energy. Three different bears from three different habitats. Can you think of some other habitats? Think of the animals and plants that might live there. There we go. So, did you enjoy that video, Squishy? Oh, yes, yeah, she, she really enjoyed that. She said that she didn't really know much about habitats before, but now she feels like she knows a little bit more. She knows that different animals live in different habitats for different reasons. It helps them adapt to their environment and it's where they can get food, water, shelter. So it, there's lots of different ones, aren't there? Okay, now I found a song all about habitats as well. And I thought you might either like to clap along or you can join in if you're at home and it's safe to do so. Um, but I thought I'd play you this song all about habitats. I hope it won't be too loud. Let's go. Let's go. I am an explorer of this beautiful earth, from the jungle to the polar caps. There are so many different homes for living things, and we call them habitats. Forest is made up of trees and animals. Oxygen and water are the norm. Temperate means it goes through different seasons, and tropical means it's very wet and warm. A forest is a home for living things, and it's one of the habitats. Grasslands can have many titles, pampas, prairies, savannas, or steppes. And just like forests, they can be tropical or temperate. 
A grassland is a home for living things, and it's one of the habitats. Fresh water can be a marsh or river, a wetland, a swamp, or a lake. And fresh water can be ideal for insects, for beavers, and snakes. Fresh water is a home for living things, and it's one of the habitats. The poles include the Arctic and Antarctic. Both are very dry and cold. And animals need blubber or hibernation if they want to live around the poles. A polar biome is a home for living things, and it's one of the habitats. A desert's dry and doesn't have much water. Some species live by storing it inside. Some hide beneath the sand when it gets hotter, and come out in the open when it's night. A desert is a home for living things, and it's one of the habitats. The ocean is vast, and it's all salt water, with jellyfish, whales, and sharks. From the coral reef in the shallow parts to the deep where it's always dark. The ocean is a home for living things. There are even more homes for living things. So many different homes for living things. And we call them habitats. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that song. I know we did, didn't we, Squishy? Oh yes, she really enjoyed that. We liked having a little dance and sing to that. So you can always rewind it and listen to it again and sing along if you'd like to. Okay, I'm now going to show you some more information about different world habitats. So hopefully you can see this. So we want to be able to describe a habitat and identify the animals that live in it. We want to be able to ask and answer questions about habitats. So we're going to be thinking about the conditions of a habitat, the features of different animals, the needs of different plants and animals, and we want to be able to ask and answer those questions. So world habitats. First of all, do you remember how plants and animals rely on the environment around them to provide them with everything they need? This means they have to live somewhere that has the right conditions to help them stay alive and well. Because different places around the world have different conditions, the plants and animals that live there are different too. These different animals and plants all have special ways to survive in their special habitats. So here we go, we're going to find out about some of the different habitats around the world and some of the different plants and animals that live there. We're going to have a look at rainforests, the Arctic, oceans, and the desert. First of all, we'll start with oceans. Many kinds of plants grow in the ocean, including seaweed, grasses, algae, and even flowers. The, ocean can, the oceans contain all kinds of creatures. Can you have a think of any that you might find in the ocean? You can see someone here already, but I wonder if you can think of any others. We've got giant whales. We've got plankton, so tiny that you need a microscope to see them. There are more than 21,000 species of fish in the ocean. Fish breathe underwater using special organs called gills. Many mammals live in the sea, such as seals, whales, and dolphins. These creatures need to return to the surface to breathe air like we do. Some creatures crawl over the bottom of the ocean or burrow beneath it. They include lobsters, crabs, prawns, and starfish. And here's some pictures of the animals of the ocean. I wonder if you can tell me what these animals are. 
have a little think. Oh, I can see a big scary shark there. Starfish. Oh, that's a pretty fish as well with lots of colours. And a bit of seaweed, one of the plants of the ocean as well. Then we come to the Arctic. The Arctic Circle is located at the top of the Earth. It's very cold in the Arctic all year round. The only plants that can grow in the Arctic region are grass and mosses. Trees are unable to grow because the ground stays frozen all year round. Gosh, can you imagine that? If it was cold all year round, we didn't have much sunshine and much heat, that would be strange. In some places in the Arctic, it's too cold for anything to grow at all. There are many land mammals in the Arctic, including ox, reindeer, Arctic foxes, weasels, wolves, polar bears and brown bears. Seals, walruses and whales live here and feed from the plankton and fish in the sea. And here you go, here's some of the different animals that live in the Arctic. You can spot there, I wonder if you can name what these animals are. Of course, we've got a polar bear, an Arctic hare, an Arctic fox, and a seal. Now we move on to the tropical rainforests. I wonder if you can think of some animals that might live in the rainforests. We've been learning all about Australia at the moment in our topic. And there's a very famous rainforest in Australia. Do you know what it's called? Squishy, do you know what it's called? Ah, you're right, Squishy. It's the Daintree Rainforest. And you find lots of different animals there. So the tropical rainforests are home to gigantic trees, colorful birds, millions of bright insects, and many different mammals. There are more trees in tropical rainforests than anywhere else in the world. These trees are home to a lot, to lots of animals. Most of them live high in the branches where they can find food. Insects, small birds, frogs feed on the fruit, seeds and leaves, or other small creatures. Tree living lizards, chameleons and snakes feed on smaller animals. Plant eating mammals such as flying squirrels, monkeys and sloths live in the forest canopy. So there's different layers to the rainforest and the forest canopy is where those animals live. Carnivores such as jaguars and leopards hunt in the trees to catch prey. These are some of the animals that you might find in the tropical rainforest and some of the plants too. You can see the trees are incredibly tall and there's lots of them. Now we move on to the deserts. Because there's such little water in the desert, not many living things can survive here. Animals and plants that live here are especially adapted to the harsh, dry conditions. Many desert plants have leaves that collect and store water. Since water is so scarce, that means there's not a lot of it. Most desert animals get their water from eating these plants or from the blood and body tissues of their prey. Some animals like kangaroos and lizards live in burrows which do not get too hot or cold and have damp air inside. These animals stay in their burrows during the hot days, coming out at night to feed. Camels can drink large amounts of water at one time and can survive as long as two weeks without drinking. Wow, that's impressive. They have large spread out feet that help them to walk on the soft sand. So all these different animals are adapted to their environment. So the way they look, the way their paws are, their hands are, the way they they have, if they have fur or all these things are so that they can survive in their chosen environment. These are just some animals that you might find in the desert. I wonder if you can figure out what these animals are as well. Okay, so today's lesson then is all about world habitats. What I would like you to do is 
I would like you to do some research all about habitats. Do you know what researching means? Researching means finding out more information about something you're interested in. How do you think we could find more information? Hmm. What could we use to find more information? Well, you can read it in an information book. If you happen to have some information books at home about different animals, you might choose to have a look at them. You can find out about it by looking it up on the internet. Obviously with supervision probably from a parent, just make sure you're searching the right things. And you could ask a question of someone who knows more about the topic. If you've got an older brother or sister, they might know some things about these animals that you don't know, or a relative or your parents or somebody at home, you might be able to ask them. Now, I have also got this information sheet, which will be on the school website for you to look at. And this is an information fact sheet all about the different animals, first of all, in the Arctic. So you can use this to help you with your research if you haven't got any of the other sources. So this tells us all about polar bears, the Arctic wolf, Arctic hare, reindeer, puffins, Arctic poppy. So this tells us about the different animals and plants that you would find in the Arctic and it gives us a little bit more information about them as well. So it tells us that polar bears have white fur to camouflage them in the snow. And we were talking about how different animals and plants are adapted to their environment because polar bears also have very wide feet and flat feet to help them walk in the deep snow. So it gives you information about the animals and plants and how they've adapted to their environment. And it also has a fact sheet about desert animals. So we can pick one of these. Which one should we look at? Well, I really like kangaroos. So let's have a look at kangaroos. It says kangaroos have strong legs and tails so they can jump for long distances to find food and water. Where do you think you might find some kangaroos? Which country? What do you think? Squishy, do you know? Oh, I wonder if the children at home came up with the same answer as Squishy. Squishy says you might find some in Australia. Is that what you thought? Absolutely, you find lots of kangaroos in Australia. And that's what we're learning about in our topic as well. Then it moves on to ocean habitats. So you can also find lots of information about different animals and plants that live in the ocean. Let's have a look at dolphins. Dolphins have fins and tails for swimming. They cannot breathe underwater, so they have a blowhole for breathing air from the ocean surface. So we've got lots of interesting facts here. And the last sheet is all about tropical habitats. So this tells us about the rainforest. It talks about the rainforest at the top here, and then it tells us about the different animals and plants that you might find there. Let's have a look. I know, Squishy, you can choose this time. Which one would you like to look at? Okay, that's a good one. Jaguars. So jaguars are good at climbing trees to catch prey. They have spotted coats so they can hide among the trees. Very clever, these animals who manage to camouflage, which means blend into the background behind you so that other animals can't see you. Very clever, isn't it? So you're more than welcome to use these to help you with the activity I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay, so your task now, now that we've learned all about the different habitats, your task now, oh, let me just find it. Here it is, is to have a look at the fact sheets or you can go on the internet with supervision or you can look in some information books at home. Or remember, you can ask family members too. What I want you to do is I want you to draw your chosen habitat. So are you going to choose the ocean? Are you going to choose the desert? Are you going to choose tropical habitat? Or I've forgotten the other one. What was the other one year two? Ah, yes. I forgot to say the Arctic, I think. So rainforest, Arctic, ocean or desert. You choose one of those habitats. And then 
what I want you to do is I want you to use this space here to draw the plants and animals that live in your chosen habitat. So for example, if you chose the rainforest, you might like to draw some big, huge trees. You might like to draw a jaguar, some monkeys, a sloth, some colorful birds. You might like to draw some frogs and snakes as well that would be in the lower part of the rainforest. You can decide which habitat you would like to choose and which one you would like to draw. Then I would like you to write a sentence to describe what it is like in that habitat. So for example, in the rainforest, it is very hot and humid and it also rains a lot, hence the name rainforest. So you can talk about what it is like in that environment and think carefully about your sentence. Remember to always start your sentence with a capital letter and end your sentence with a full stop. You're right, because what happens year two if we don't put a full stop at the end? That's right. Our letters roll away and we wouldn't want your work and letters to roll away, would we? So you have to put full stop at the end. And between every word, what should there be? You're right, a finger space. So you have to make sure you've got a capital letter to start your sentence, finger space after every word, and don't forget that full stop at the end that makes sure your letters don't go rolling away off the page. I really look forward, oh, I can stop sharing now. Here we go. I, myself and Squishy, really look forward to seeing your fantastic work all about the different world habitats. So it'll be great. I'm hoping I will get some of you sending in ones about the rainforest, some about deserts, some about the oceans. It'll be great to see lots of different habitats and different animals and different plants. Maybe you'll research some that we haven't even talked about yet. That would be really great if you could. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your work and Squishy is too. So thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you can always message me on Class Dojo and I'll be happy to answer any. I will say have a great rest of the day and I look forward to seeing your work. Now, I will just... Sharing that. Bye, everyone.